Welcome out to another episode of Andrew Good Camera. In today's episode, I'm coming to you on vacation from an undisclosed location because I do not want the paparazzi to know where I'm at. If they did, it would just, it would ruin everything. So I'm not gonna tell you where I am, but I've left a, a few clues for the detectives among you. But I'm really excited about today's video because I'm gonna be reviewing a lens that is new from Tamron that I'm really excited about because it just might be the perfect travel lens. And this is the, the new lens from Tamron, of course, the 28 to 75 F28 DI3 VXD G2. It's a mouthful and it's a great lens and I'm excited to talk to you about it today. After five days of shooting with this really great lens and working on my vacation glow, um, I do have some thoughts, a lot of thoughts about this Tamron 28 to 75. And the first, we'll start generally broadly, the experience of shooting with it, the build quality. And to start out with, I mean, I've, I've shot, you know, a long time. And back in the day, Tamron was not the same as the Tamron we see today. This is a beautifully crafted instrument of photography excellence in my mind. And um, for a, a price of, I don't know, depending on where you get it, I believe the price is around $1,000. The build quality is superb. It feels like what you might get from the big four or five lens manufacturers out there. So um, a budget alternative to some of those more expensive lenses, like for instance, Nikon's Nikkor Z um, 24-70 2.8 S lens, which I believe where are we at with that? Uh, $2,400. So a comparable lens, a 2.8 lens with close focal length um, similarities, but for less than half the price, yes please. And so if this can compete with the image quality of that Nikkor 24-70, which we won't find out in this video, but if you, if you want, if there's enough of you and if this video does well enough, I'll certainly be happy to do a lens comparison with this and the 24 to 70 um, Nikkor lens. So, but if this can compete with that lens on image quality, it's really a no brainer. Um, this is the lens that you'll reach to. And I think speaking of the focal length, um, for me personally, I would rather have a 28 to 75 millimeter lens um, for just that little extra reach and because I'm a huge 24 millimeter fan, and hang with me, the reason why I don't need a 24 millimeter in, in, a, in a zoom lens is because I'm always going to get 24 millimeter in a prime. That is absolutely by, by far my favorite focal length, and I love a fast aperture prime. So um, that's why I don't, I don't necessarily need this to be a 24 millimeter zoom. I would prefer it to be 28 to, to uh, 75 to get me a little bit more reach, especially in a vacation setting, but especially if this is going to be used at all in portraiture. Where I shoot events, that little extra reach is, um, is something I'd rather have anyway. So. That's great. Um, not all of you might agree with those focal length decisions. That's just one perspective that I offer. As far as other lenses to compare it to, um, Nikkor also makes the 24 to 120 f4. It's not as fast aperture, but it does get you a little bit more uh, focal distance. Um, so we trade off. That's a trade off that you might have, but it's also a larger lens. So for me, it's not worth it. I would prefer smaller lens and far less expensive lens also and uh, have a 2.8 aperture. Um, but I could, I could go either way. Um, I just slightly prefer these trade-offs um, right now. And, and, I, and to be fair also, I haven't shot with that 24 to 120 f 40 lens yet either. So, but my guarded first, I guess, opinion <laughs> is that I would prefer this lens over that. But when it comes to this lens's build quality, um, like I said, it, it's very good. Um, certainly adequate for anything I do. Um, from the bottom, right, right down to the bottom, I love this kind of white gold appearance um, and the weather ceiling. The weather ceiling already saved me once, I have to say, um, when the ocean waves caught me by surprise when I was working on this rock photo. Not my 
proudest moment of photography. But it's nice to know that the, the lens is not going to suffer from a surprise attack from the ocean or the weather. Or just the sand of the beach. It's just nice to have that weather sealing. Moving up, it does have a port, and I like that. There's uh, an app you can get on your phone if it's a USB-C um, device. You can plug straight from your device into the lens and update the firmware as well as adjust um, features like change what this button does. By default, that's gonna be your exposure lock. I changed it to be a focus snap feature. Um, haven't really used it, but I was experimenting with that to see if like in a street photography setting, it'd be nice to be able to hit that and go to like infinity focus or a, a, a certain focus mode or, or a closer focus. Um, and you can also adjust what the dials do. So if you want this to not manual focus, for instance, you could, I, I think, I believe you can make this be an aperture wheel, which I should experiment with because I would rather that personally. Probably, I don't know. I do a lot of manual focus also. Maybe it would be cool if you could push this and have that toggle between manual focus and aperture. That would be cool. I don't think you can, but maybe something to consider, Tamron. Now this is a newer version of an older lens. I think it's, they say it's the second version of this lens, even though it has the three there. Um, there's a few updates they made to it, as well as obviously making it available for the Z mount. Um, they also made it focus closer. I believe this can focus to 7.1 inches, um, which I like. You, you know, um, if you know me, you know that I'm a big fan of close focusing. It also has the VXD, which stands for, I have to read this, it's a voice coil extreme torque drive mechanism. So that's an improved and snappier focus um, system. And that's a linear focus uh, motor, um, and it's very fast, very snappy from everything I could see. Uh, never missed a shot with that, um, so that's great. Moving up, we see that it's, it is an external. I don't love that it's an external focused lens. I like it when it's all enclosed and focuses internally, but if it saves weight and size in a travel situation, I don't know, maybe that's better. And that's one thing I have to say, speaking of the size, is that it's doable. I wouldn't want anything bigger than this. This is about where my limit would be with a, with a travel lens. It doesn't draw as much attention, but it still has a good um, zoom range and still has a fast aperture. So for me, this balances all of the things. That's why I think this really is an awesome travel photography lens. Balances fast aperture with uh, a good zoom range for flexibility and it's not too big and has the weather ceiling. So for all of those factors, that's why I consider this right now anyway, my travel lens of choice. Um, and uh, maybe that's just because I have travel on my mind. <laughs> um, I'll, I have yet to see how it does in, a, in a, an, event, an event situation, which is the other thing I photograph a lot, or a documentary photography situation with my uh, rural architecture. I haven't, haven't experimented with it there yet, but I suspect if it can do well in a travel situation, it'll be fine in those situations as well. Um, so that's a little bit about the exterior. Oh, I also note that it says designed Japan. I thought that was interesting. Does that mean, oh, and it's made in Japan. So that's interesting. It says designed in Japan in big bold, and then lower, lower down it says made in Japan. Um, so I like that. Um, a lot of lenses these days are made in China. This is, Tamron is not a third party lens manufacturer where things are made um, a little bit more affordably in China. Ostensibly, that means you're going to get more consistency in the quality of the build. But that's about it when it comes to the build quality, the shooting experience, all good there. The only critical thing that I can think to say is that external, um, that external zoom. That's the one thing that um, could be improved maybe, but then maybe it would make it too big. So maybe it's fine. But that's it as far as that goes. Let's move on to image quality. We'll switch to voiceover mode to talk about that. But before we get into image quality and I show you some glorious vacation sample photos, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Toon Tank. Toon Tank is a safe and accessible music resource for creators of any size. What I love about Toon Tank is that it grows with you, the creator. 
For those of you new to creating content on any platform, Toontank offers you a free resource immediately to use their full library without fear of copyright complaints or revenue sharing. Other larger platforms like Epidemic Sound do not offer this and it would make you subscribe immediately. Whereas with Toontank, you use the music, you remove the copyright, and that's it. In addition to that, they just have a lot of great music. It took me only five minutes to choose the intro music for this video that you're watching right now. I had the idea to show the word Cancun everywhere I saw it for the travel montage for the intro. So I wanted some energetic, fast-hitting hip-hop vlog style beats. To find the track, I simply went to the vlog genre and began previewing any track that looked like it had a heavier intro and found this one very quickly. But if hip hop or lo-fi vibe isn't your thing, you'll also find great trailer music. Great country music. electronic music or even more narrowly focused genres like French or African music. For you newer creators or creators who just publish infrequently, the free version of Toontank gives you three mp3 tracks at 128 kilobits per second to use each month with no copyright, which I can tell you when I was a new creator, I would have loved this service and I would have used it in a heartbeat. But with a personal membership, which is only $7 a month, you'll get unlimited mp3s or WAV files at 320 kilobits per second. And you also get whitelisted, so no need to ever manually review copyrights when you publish videos any longer. If you're ready to try the service out, be sure to tell Toontank that I sent you by using my link on the screen right now or in the video description. Thanks Toontank for making this video possible. When it comes to image quality, this lens on the tropics, it's no surprise that it's incredibly sunny, but I was amazed at how well this lens and its coating handled flaring and ghosting. Throughout the full aperture range, it managed the sun rays incredibly well, with only slight ghosting noticeable below f8. The only artifacts that I noticed above that was dust on the sensor, which reminds me that I really need to clean that up. Similarly, the lens demonstrates little to no chromatic aberration. Tamron's broadband anti-reflection coating mitigates any discernible greens or purple fringing on objects even when wide open. It also does a great job of providing some brilliant color and contrast. If you know me, you know I don't tend to put a lot of value in bokeh quality. I think what's in focus is more important than what is not in focus. But if that's something you care about, then rest assured that when shooting wide open, both zoomed out or zoomed in at the 75, you'll get some buttery smooth bokeh rendering and some wonderful transitions. I've saved the sharpness discussion for last, but that's not because I was disappointed. One thing you do have to say about this lens is that it's actually very consistent across zoom ranges and across apertures. With only a few discrepancies on quality, and those are minor, out of the gate, it isn't the sharpest lens that I've ever tested, but it's no slouch. And as an example of just how consistent it is, where you'd expect the biggest difference between wide open and mid aperture zoomed out, there's actually not a significant difference. It is slightly softer maybe at the f2.8 in the center and at the edges than it is at 5.6, but it's way less than I've seen on many other zoom lenses. Zoomed in at the 75 millimeters, you see a slightly larger difference, but it's still not bad. You see slightly more softness towards the center at f2.8 than you do at f5.6, and you do see a lot less contrast. At the edges though, it's not as large a difference. It's a similar story comparing f22 to f5.6 at the center, slightly softer at f22, both at the center, and even more at the edges. And I'd say that's the weakest part of the image quality of this lens, zoomed all the way in at 75 millimeters at the corners and edges where things are the softest and at the extreme apertures. But I wouldn't describe this lens as soft, it's just slightly softer than its sharpest at those areas. In summary, you'll get the sharpest that this lens can provide when you're zoomed out, not zoomed in. But again, it's not a huge difference. That covers most of the technical aspects of this lens. I'll show you a few more samples that I collected on the trip and then some that I took after, and then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts.
I wrap up my time with this lens and my time at my undisclosed vacationary location, I'd sum up my experience as extremely positive. There's not a lot of negative that you can say about this lens. Maybe not the absolute sharpest lens ever in the history of lenses, especially when compared to some of those Bang or Z Nikkor lenses out there, but more than adequate for just about any type of photography and certainly more than adequate for me in travel, documentary, or event photography. And I wouldn't hesitate to use this as my wide to mid-angle zoom lens of choice. But that's all I've got for you today. Thank you all for watching. If you watch this because you're interested in this lens, um, I hope you gain some value of it. If, you, if you're watching just because you like photo stuff, you're a fan of the channel, then thank you and bless you. Um, this is my full-time job, so it's very meaningful. It means a lot to me that you are here. So check out the sponsor, give them some love, and uh, subscribe if you haven't. And remember, above all, do good with your camera, and we'll talk to you again real soon.